All right, guys, we are starting the trade night and cart show weekend in Springfield, Massachusetts. Here's my good friend, Krill. Yo, 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 can real recognize real? So we're about to head to the trade night. A quick pit stop at Simsbury, picked up some wax for a trade night. So what did you end up getting? Got about a thousand dollars worth of nice hockey product. 0607 SPX, get a nice Malkin RPA. Hope for some big hits out of Leaf Superlative, a bunch of Series 2, etc., etc. It's going to be a fun night. We're going to rip it all. All right, guys, we are officially at the NBA Basketball Hall of Fame. Really sick venue for a trade night. A few different options what I want to do, whether I want to stay the entire night all the way to 11 or call it early to go watch a metal concert. As I Lay Dying is playing close by. I haven't seen them live yet. So it'll be a game time decision whether I go to the concert or stay at trade night the entire time. Either way, I want to sell some cards, buy some cards, and rip open three boxes for people at the show. So let's see how we do. Go in. It's like straight up like Jordan memorabilia. Oh, that's sick. Ooh, my boy Grant Hill. I had that jersey in my ears. So first impressions, this is honestly the sickest trade night venue I've been to. I mean, I'm gonna take you guys around. We have tables set up. Here we have basketball hoops. I'm gonna turn this up to the roof as well. And over here, you guys can take a look. There's a big TV, which is gonna show the baseball game tonight of the Red Sox. We got more memorabilia on that side as well as banners at the very top. Don't know how well that is showcasing. But this is such a cool venue, man. I immediately it stands out compared to all the other hotel trade nights that I've been to. Sweet. Solid. Soccer players. They're coming out with like hangers and blasters. Yeah. So I pre-ordered those. Because yeah. you're the fifth person that's asking about those. Yeah. Those are good too. Yeah. Those are good too. Yeah. So I pre-ordered a bunch of those hangers and blasters. And then I just try I got a little bit of stuff. Yeah. Don't load it. They didn't make a lot of it. For the I don't know what you'll what you'll get it for. First deal done at trade night, what do you end up getting? Josh Allen rookie wave for 25. First quick pickup at trade night was this Miguel Cabrera 2006. It is numbered 250. Early Miggy and pool stuff, especially lower number, has a large collector base. So I picked it up for $25. This trade of trade night is finally complete. I ended up moving some of the judges that I picked in that large lot in Indiana in last week's vlog. Go and check that out. Make sure to watch that video. Trade those, an AJ Brown RPA that I had in my collection for a while, and also a Devers rookie nine and a half that I picked up all the way back at the Miami card show last year. In return, I got this Trout short print from 2014 as a BGS 10 and also $25 cash. Take a look at the trade on the table. Like I wouldn't, that's not mine. Yeah, I'm, not, exactly. I'm not gonna be the dumb dumb. And then, and then, and then he, that one, the one that sells it. It's 40 bucks, there you go. It's 40 bucks. I'll go 40 bucks. All right, pack number three this time. Auto spoiled on this one. Autograph of DJ Funderburk. That is numbered as well to 20. There you go. Number to 20 auto. There you go. Dayron Sharp, Clay Thompson, Mac Blung. That's got parallel in there as well. Paul Pierce, not numbered. Paul George. Keon Johnson, Josh Christopher, Miles McBride, and then we got a Jason Kidd, 2012 Prism over there. So that is the break on the free box. Cool. cool. Main hits were the 2012 Jason Kidd and also the autograph number 20, but. That's pretty much a wrap for trade night. I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow at the card show. It is day number two, this time for the card show. We're here in downtown Springfield at the Mass Mutual Center. Now, I have to give myself a few goals to achieve at the show. First off, I wanna find a card 
for one of my buyers. I have a few different people that have buyer lists for me. I want to accomplish that. I also want to get some wax so I can open that up on Card Shop Live next week. And then maybe I can do a bulk deal. We'll see what ends up happening at the show. I'm going to take you along the way. So then, then if you know it's a legit offer, you can, so that you got to pay them to see your here. 20 bucks. With nothing? I take a shot. How about Does it with, look real? How about with the certification? No. Uh, I, I, if, I, it, I, if it had JSA, salvage the war. You're, you're the hot I am the hockey guy. All my type of... 8 by 10 Jogger photo Let it go. Huh? Let it go. The thing is, he would like to verify all the prices. First deal done at the New England Card Show is this value box lot of eight cards. Ended up paying $75. Take a look at what I got. Next pickup here is this 1958 Mantle as a PSA 5. Mantle collectors always go crazy over his 50 stuff. A little bit better center than some other examples, although the corners aren't as well. So pick that up for $750. Take 65 for the Kershaw. That's, nah, I take 70. It's already that's probably 70. like a buck and a quarter, a buck fifty if it didn't have that little touch on the edge, but it's probably the best. I'll do 70 on it. Next pickup is this Clayton Kershaw five star on card autograph numbered at 25. There's a little bit of damage to it, but we ended up picking it up for $70. So I picked these both up for Robert on Twitter. Has a really great Relic PC, something that I think is one of the best in the hobby. So these were $500. You have a Pee Wee Reese, one of one from National Treasures, and then a jumbo dual-sided of Ty Cobb. Check out this. Relic on one side, and then you flip it over, Relic on the other side. I have a Kofax like this in my own PC. So if you guys are looking for some unique cards at card shows and you want me to find them for you, just email me down below, and I'll try my best to work out some deals. Live? Not live, just <laughs> doing some B-roll. Yeah. Look at that little get up, huh? That's pretty nice. With what? Do a little oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Get up there. yeah. Not too bad. That was too the line was too long. Way too long. Just wish it wasn't cut right there. It's a bad cut. I don't know, 25 bucks? Yeah, that's cool. Awesome. Easy. I'll get you on PayPal. With the 1933 Gaudi set being one of the most desirable out there, people are always chasing after the Hall of Famer set. This is a Bill Terry. It is altered. If you look at the bottom of the card, completely cut, which is really unfortunate. There were a few people that did cut the bottoms of these Gaudis to get them signed, kind of the signature mark, but this is an unsigned example. Even so, there are collectors that will want a altered card within their collection of a Hall of Famer. Eat uh, two, two red minis. Gotcha. With the shells.
<laughs> if I ended up doing these four, what would you be at? You did 1200 for the four? Yeah. So. Think you could do 1150? Yeah. Awesome, I appreciate it. Pick up this four card lot for 1150. Headlined really by the Koufax rookie and also the Ernie Banks in a SGC3. Got two other boxing cards to throw into my pre-war boxing PC. Sam Ketchel and then also a Sam Langford. These are honest long cut backs and I did not have these yet. They're a little bit rare. So while willing and dealing around the show, a guy reached out on Instagram. I ended up picking up this 1934 Dizzy Dean 1.5 for $285. 33 Gaudi is a lot more desirable, but there's still a ton of collectors for 34. Can't remember on top of my head if he won the pitching triple crown in 33 or 34, one of those two years. But really, really incredible run for a few years in the early 1930s before he blew out his arm and then became a broadcaster. But he is a Cardinals legend. All right, so what are you thinking on the stock? I got like fourteen hundred. How about nine? Eight hundred. Eight. Okay. Spent about an hour again going through some more bargain bins and I picked up this entire lot you can sell for $800. Mixture of baseball and hockey cards. I'm going to sell the hockey cards to my friend and a lot of the St. Louis Cardinals to Gatlin. You've seen him on the channel before. Pre-war collector out of St. Louis. I know he moves a lot of Molina and Pools and Wainwright and as you saw over here there's a few different autos and super short prints in the lot. So something that at the St. Louis Card Show would do really great. But from Florida and some of the other East Coast shows, I won't be able to move as much. Yeah, I hear that. So just picked up these two Topps Chrome black boxes from Skybox Collectibles. I'm going to be opening up next week on Card Shop Live. It's super cool with this because very few cards compared to some of the other Topps Chrome products. And there's some great autos in here. I believe Sandy Koufax is in here, as well as some other Hall of Famers. So check that out on the channel when we upload that. Sometimes you have to help your friends out. Since I made that large deal, I got a pretty good discount. I saw the hockey, Young Guns, Future Watches and I thought they were a good deal, so I ended up selling them for 75% comps. So you can make some money as well. Win-win deal. Thanks, Ryan. Okay, so Hobby Palooza is this weekend. For the next hour at the show, I'm gonna be walking around with my phone live streaming on the Bench Clear media channel. So if I make any deals, any of the other footage will be here live directly from the channel. Yo and hello everybody, Mike here. And I wanted to come on first because I wanna explain what's gonna happen over the next hour. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be a hobby palooza first. Uh, Ryan from Breakout Cards is in at the New England Sports Card Show right now. And he's doing his thing, walking around. And it's the last hour of that show. 
And so he's going to walk around, kind of tell you some stories, maybe interview some dealers, all kinds of cool stuff. So we're going to get to be for the next hour live with Ryan at the card show. So I'm going to bring him on and uh, let him do his thing. Hey, Ryan. All right, guys. So we're here at the New England card show. Show literally ends in about an hour. People have started to pack up, but there's a lot of opportunities. So I'm going to take you guys around, show you some tables, and then maybe we can work on some deals as well. First, I got to show you this vintage pre-war table over here because of cards that are really cool. 1800s boxing, which you don't often see at card shows. So we'll take you over there, take a look at some of the different other tables as well, talk to some dealers, do some interviews, and overall vibes of the show. Because I bought quite a lot today. I feel a lot of people are trying to liquidate it. Back camera over here. So I'm going to just go through some of the tables so you guys can see different stuff that's over here. So right over there, we got the Joe Lewis rookie. This looks pretty sharp overall. It's back all the way from 1935. We have a Tattoo Orbit. This is a Chicago-based card. Same 33 year as Gaudi. It's another 33 card, which I'll show you on the other side. I might end up buying it a little bit later. Got a nice Burley Grimes. And we got a Wheaties Bob Beller over here. But I want to show you guys some other stuff that's kind of cool over here. So those are 1890 Mayos. And if you don't know some of these fighters, Jake Kilrain fought John L. Sullivan back in the 1800s for one of the most famous fights of all time. These cards are really, really tough. You very rarely see them at shows. It's the same company that made the football and also the baseball Mayos in the mid 1800s. Some other stuff over here that's pretty cool. He always sets up on a different New England shows and pretty insane vintage setup as well. More 50s through 70s stuff rather than pre-war like the one I showed you guys. Also at this show, full service food, which is kind of nice. I skip lunch to keep making deals, tend to do that all the time. We got my boy Matt over here. You're live, man. What's up, buddy? How are you? Good. Good to see you. Nice to see you as well. So tell us about that deal. I know you told me that you just made a big deal. Yeah, you know. so I had a guy come over and he's a super Ted Williams collector. Um, he was almost done with the full run. And I just happened to have like all the cards he needed. Um, so he picked up a 40 play ball, uh, 40 play ball, a 41 play ball, a 48 leaf, and a 50 Bowman from me. I gave him a really good price, and he finished his run, and he was super happy. Um, so, yeah, it was a really cool deal. It was a really fun deal to make. That's awesome. Besides Sid Williams, what have people been asking for you so far at the show? Um, a lot of Aaron. Uh, obviously, Mantle, as we all know. Um, Mays. Uh, yeah, that's about it. A couple of guys were asking about Ernie Banks. He's starting to grow in popularity, I'm thinking. He definitely um, has been. I've been noticing that as well. Yeah. These people were realizing, like, from the Chicago Cubs side of things, at least from the 50s through 70s, or even all the way to like 2000, thanks is that. Hey, thanks for coming out to the New England Card Show. Appreciate it, had a great summer show. Look for our next big event, October 1st and 2nd. We're going to a two day event with primetime Saturday night at the Basketball Hall of Fame. So looking forward to everybody coming out. Thank you. Oh, we got the truck in the back. I think that's a wrap for the card show. Tons of great buying today. Had a ton of fun. Thanks again to the New England Card Show for having me out here. And next week, guys, I'm going to be going to Jacksonville, and I'll catch you at the show.